Tomorrow, all eyes will once again turn to Minnesota. That's when former police officer Derek Chauvin will be facing sentencing. In April, Chauvin was convicted of second degree unintentional murder, three, third degree murder and second degree manslaughter in the killing of George Floyd. So tomorrow, the judge will be announcing the sentence for Derek Chauvin. I News legal expert Whitney Trailer joins us now. So let's talk about what prosecutors and defense ask for in this sentencing, what the judge has to sort out. What's realistic? Sure. Good afternoon, Tom. So the maximum sentence that, that he can receive is 40 years for the second degree murder conviction. So the prosecution is actually asking for a 30 year sentence, which deviates from the presumptive 12.5. So most people in Minneapolis, Minnesota uh, get 12.5 years for a for a first time offense like this. So the prosecution is asking for 30 years. The defense is asking for actually a new trial, probation, a lesser sentence. They're even saying, hey, give him time served, which is two, uh, two months. That's probably not going to happen. I think most experts are predicting 25 to 30 years because the judge found that there were aggravating factors. So if, if you could pair these two questions for me, one is uh, you think judges go by the book. I mean, is this a normal trial? Obviously, there's an officer involved and there's all the publicity that came with it. I don't know if this is, you know, something you do go by the book or something you can't go by the book because of what happened. And then I also think of because Peter Cahill, the judge presided over the trial, he too, to some extent, was a juror. He listened and saw all this testimony. How does that impact him as well? That's a great point, Tom. He presided over the trial. He presided over the post-trial motions. He's already heard uh, and read reports and witness statements and things like that. So the judges, uh, and I did some research on him. He has an excellent reputation. He's known as being deliberate and thorough and very reasoned. And if you saw in the trial, he didn't insert himself. The trial wasn't about him as the judge. And so um, he, uh, I think people are feeling confident that that he will come to a reasoned um, decision. And so he's going to consider the witness impact statements. Pre there was a pre-sentencing investigation report that was prepared by the DOC. And of course, what is gonna really have people on pins and needles tomorrow is Derek Chauvin himself will have an opportunity to address the court. And some are expecting that he would show some remorse. Some are saying that he probably won't because it won't make a difference at this point. So that will be a real uh, interesting piece to see tomorrow if Derek Chauvin testifies. So he will be using to some extent precedent. He also will be wary of making precedent, I imagine, as well, Whitney. That's exactly right, because this is a very rare situation. I mean, there's only police are rarely prosecuted. There's about a thousand people a year who are uh, killed by police and less than one percent are charged. And so in the last 15 years, there's only been 11 officers who have actually been convicted. In this case, though, I mean, the majority of those cases uh, where officers were convicted for on duty murders, it was because uh, they were gunshots. In this case, what was so devastating and, and completely aggravating was the fact that it was such a long period of time. He had an opportunity to deliberate and think about it. It wasn't a split second decision. So I think that's a real difference in this case than those, those other 15. Well, so many will be watching tomorrow. Whitney Trailer, as always, thanks for your insight. Good to be here. Thanks.